Tonight's match is presented by Allegheny Health Network. Saturday night at the scenic Highmark Stadium in the Steel City, where the fans are ready for a battle of unbeatens between the Pittsburgh River Hounds and the Loudoun United FC. Good evening, everybody. Ari Shanak, along with Jose Rodriguez. Jose, it may be early, but this one has significance in the Eastern Conference standings. Absolutely, Ari. You know, this is uh, one of those matchups that, you know, if we're, if we're further in the season, we start thinking about playoffs. But right now, it's early, and it's all about keeping that momentum going. Both of these teams are off to a good start. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to have a tough challenge in the Eastern Conference. There's a lot of competition, and, and they still have a lot of work to do. But so far, it's a good start for both of them, especially for Pittsburgh in fourth place. And our players to watch tonight for the Hounds, all-time USL championship assist leader, Canardo Forbes. Well, three matches played this year for Canardo. One goal scored. That goal was against Hartford. He's playing in his fifth season with Pittsburgh, knows the system well, and he's a big part of the success with, under Bob Lilly here at Pittsburgh. And for Loudon, the young, talented Tyler Freeman. Well, he's not in the starting lineup, but there's a reason why we are highlighting him. Three matches played, two goals scored. Only 19 years old. Look out for him to bring some energy into the second half. That's exactly what he has been able to do in the early part of the season. And we'll be back with lineups and the opening kick from Highmark Stadium. Fun comes in all shapes, sizes, and jackpots. These games, they've become a part of me. They get me excited, make me happy. Although I've never been one for math, I've never had more fun with numbers. The thrill, the suspense. You know, it leaves me speechless. But if there's one thing I have to say, it's how much I love it. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Cheer on the Riverhounds all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. We are back at the Steel City, Pittsburgh River Hounds, Loudoun United FC. Tonight's starting lineups are presented by Armina Stone. And here's a good look at the 11 for Coach Lilly. Well, it's a 4-5-1 formation, very dynamic with Wheat on the right side, Biasi making his first start as a left back. Silva on goal, of course. And in the middle of the field, plenty of quality with Cicerone, Forbes, and Griffin. They all are trying to set up Tikwa in a position where he can be successful inside the box. And tonight's loud in lineup presented by Armina Stone. And here is Coach Martin's team. Well, for Loudon, just, uh, you know, they, they have a solid three-man backline with Hopkins, Sarges, and Lillard. 
but they are going to need help with green from green and gamble as well moving back a little bit in the middle the stability within the job for downs and garai and at the top hopkins coming into the lineup he was not there in the last game against miami fc And Zamudio has been outstanding. He's not been beaten yet this season, Jose. Luis, uh, four shots faced, four saves. Well, he's a quality goalkeeper, young goalkeeper, like so many players for Loudon. But this year, they, they have been able to gel very, very well from preseason. And they're showing the work that, that they have put on for quite a few weeks. So we'll see if they can keep that up tonight against a tough opponent in Pittsburgh. Uh, nice playing conditions here in this early spring evening. 50 degrees, cloudy, slight breeze out of the south at five miles an hour. And we're underway here at Highmark Stadium. Well, these two teams have been magnificent defensively, Jose. We'll see what it will take to break each team's defense. Yeah, and you know, if we look back at Loudon, not only last year, but the few years, few years back, they have they have been struggling defensively. Uh, things are changing currently for them, but you know we're early. We know Pittsburgh is a very good team defensively. They they have set up a foundation for years, and, and they should continue to be a, a good team. Rovira, working back to midfield, they play it near side. This is Peters. Kevin Silva, the keeper for the Hounds tonight, his second start of the season. And a little opening here, edge of the 18. And there is a cross, far post, headed on, and just wide left. Nice pressure and chance there created early by the Hounds. Yeah, good ball movement. It all started on the left side. Good pressure as well from Loudon right there, but a good cross. Quickly enough, they are able to get the ball inside the box and the header from Dickwood that goes just wide. So first opportunity coming off, you know, the key for Pittsburgh as of right now is going to be to move the ball as quickly as possible. And Rovira, that was his fifth cross delivered of the season. Led the team last year. It win tackles with 66. The young man out of Columbia. You see the beautiful Menangahila River at this unique Highmark Stadium. Just gorgeous. Here's Shane Wheat. Captain Canardo, long ball and a chase in the 18 and seized there by Luis Zamudio. Well, and you were just talking about him. That's a wonderful read from the young goalkeeper. Ball coming in, not afraid to get ahead of the striker and holds, holds on to the ball. Zabudio, 6'3", 190-pounder out of Las Vegas. Three clean sheets leads the Eastern Conference. Success rate of 100%, four for four. Jose, even I can read those numbers. <laughs> Just underway here in the Steel City. Loud and building. That's a good look at Coach Martin, Ryan Martin. 2016 helped build FC Cincinnati roster from scratch. Came here as the head coach in 2019. Place stopped there, but uh, part of the director of the DC United Academy since 2017, Coach Ryan Martin. It's not an easy job at all, you know, coaching a team like Cloud and with you know MLS responsibilities as well. But they're trying to give as many opportunities as possible to the young players and competing at the USA Championship level. It's something that is very valuable for this team. They are out to a terrific start, 2-0-1. They are 1-0-1 away from Segra Field, the direct affiliate of DC United. And last year, Jose, they only picked up four victories, so they've already 
have half of their win total of all last year. Yeah, you know, that's that's a very low number, but you know, it, it looks like they, they they at least tried to fix things and um, a good preseason again. It's it's key. They have been able to do that. They're playing with some confidence. Maybe they can keep it up. Advantage here for the Hounds. A chance is disrupted. That ball hit out of play just in front of the run of Forbes. What a great recovery right there from Smith moving all the way from the top trying to help out defensively. You know it's a good ball as well from Cicerone but a great read defensively and just uh, now it's time for Pittsburgh to look into set piece opportunities and how they can take advantage of them. And the corner kick for the all time USL championship assist leader Forbes serves it in back post caught out of the air by the 6-3 Zamudio. Well, he looks uh, agile back there, doesn't he, Jose? Yes, yes. You know, he has all the qualities that you need in a, in a goalkeeper. But maybe the one thing that he's missing is experience, and, you know, this is exactly what he needs. He needs to play. Challenge at midfield won by Jelani Peters. He has won a dozen aerial duels already this season. Jelani, four appearances with the Trinidad and Tobago national team in 2021. And here comes Captain Canardo. Far side. That cross attempt blocked on the deck. And here comes Loudon. Good hustle by Luke Biasi. in the backfield as they come to Hope Gund. Rio, the 19th pick overall in the 2021 draft by Orlando City. A lot of potential there. Celebrating its 75th anniversary, Select is proud to be the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship. Choose what you play with at www.selectsportamerica.com. That's select, league's choice, player's choice. Early on, it's, uh, as you see the foul in the middle right there. But Ari, early on, you know, it's, it's all about having possession for Pittsburgh. They have been able to create a couple of chances. Loudon struggling with the ball. That's uh, something that they have to work on as they move on. Pittsburgh, it's a team that likes to, to have a ball. They're very patient, and they can really hurt you if you don't put a pressure, especially in the middle of the field, where you need to recover and maybe create some counterattack opportunities. Now both of these teams have had the edge through the first three games in possession. 58% for Loudon, 52% for Pittsburgh. The Hounds averaging two goals a game, Loudon 1.3. But the defenses that we, we spoke about, Jose, the Hounds holding the opposition to 0.67 goals per game, and Loudon has not been scored upon yet. Well, yeah, you, you know, we can always expect a low scoring game, but you know, how the soccer, it's a little bit unpredictable at times. So we'll see how it goes. You know, early on, you know, you see good intensity from both sides, defensively, of course, for Loudon because they don't have the ball. But with Pittsburgh, they, they seem to be able to move the ball from side to side very easily. Yeah, they've created a couple opportunities, including a corner. Unable to keep it in was Rovira. And the throw in for Loudon, upcoming. Collision, and there's the whistle. As sent to the deck was the youngster, Jackson Hopkins. Just a 17-year-old, he's already committed to Virginia to play collegiately. You know, that's a great example of pressure right there in the middle. Ball comes in the air looking for Hopkins, and immediately three players from Pittsburgh go for the ball. That's great pressure right there. Well, that is Bob Lilly soccer, isn't it? Absolutely. Fielded by Silva. Punts it away. Good distance there, but no whistles blow. Or 
We're about nine minutes in. You can see Dequa a little puzzled by that whistle. Albert, a couple of goals. Long ball all the way into the area. A challenge here, Hope Gun, quick feet. Hope Gun out of New York City. A high draft pick, high expectations. It's a lot better from Loudon. Hear the call for second ball. Dequa, so skilled. That ball served to the near side where Forbes receives and settles. Bernardo looking for the edge. Bodied off by Hope Gun. Ordonez. They move it around with Wheat. Running far side, Argudo. Peters has Rovira, finds him. Rovira very accurate with these crossing passes in the air, and the save made. Or I should say, the ball sees just ahead of the hound attack. Well, you know, we keep talking about Samudia, but you know he's having a very good game early on. You know, he seems to give um, that stability defensively that this team needs. Um, loud and under pressure right now, but you know, the confidence of having a good goalkeeper in the back, that's something that really helps the team mentally. But they do need to get a hold of the ball a little bit more. Maybe just hold on to it, you know, don't, don't rush as you move forward. Here's an opportunity. Yeah, here's an attack. Hopkins turned away. And then a foul committed. Yeah, we talked about Zamudio Jose, and he's got the size, he's got the look, he's got the agility. He just seems to glide back there, doesn't he? Yeah, I think, you know, when when, when you look at the history of uh, uh, American soccer and, and you look at goalkeepers, you, you, you see a lot of quality. And, you know, that's part of the development of the game. If you look back and you remember goalkeepers like Tony Meola or you know Tim Howard. Traditionally, the U.S. you know usually we have very good goalkeepers, and I think Samudio is on that on that same line. Obviously, a lot of room to grow, but you know he he has that quality. Kicks that ahead, chested down there by Smith. Smith, very dangerous, quick, athletic player. Kamarni with a goal with the left foot here this season. <laughs> Giving chase to Dequa as they play it back to Zamudio. Great play by Griffin. Here comes Danny. Gorgeous lead pass. And the cross deflected out of the 18. Well designed, though, and well delivered. Rovira. Peters with time. Rovira serves it in on the deck. Back out, and that is intercepted there by Hopkins. Kept in, maybe a chance here, what a pass. Lofted out front in the air. Again, the length of Zamudio is effective. Oh, a huge mistake out of the back line for Loud and Hope Gond. Just uh, not aware of his surroundings, unable to clear the ball, taking way too much time right there given the opportunity to Cicero to recover, looking for Forbes. Open, able, able to recover in the end, blocking the first cross from Forbes. But, you know, those are the type of mistakes that you cannot allow, especially when you're playing on the road. That was an alert play by Russell Ciceroni, who led the Hounds last season with 16 goals 
and eight assists. He's got a goal already this season. Peters disrupts, but they break out with Smith. Smith gliding in on the attack. Puts it out right. That cross settled. Chance here. Oh. Shot to save by Silva. Off a big blast from Loudon and Jacob Green. Oh, and that was beautiful, Ari, from both sides of the ball. A great counterattack opportunity for Loudon. It all finishes with a left-footed shot, and what a shot it was from Hopkins, and what a save from Silva. There's Silva, we have been talking about Samudio for a while, but there's the goalkeeper for the Hounds as well. And that was some quick reflexes from the 6-1 keeper from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Corner kick, headed up and out, kept in. It'll be a goal kick coming up for Kevin. Silva, the keeper, out of UCLA. This portion of the broadcast is presented by Epic Insurance Brokers and Consultants. Well, you know, I think, you know, in the last few minutes, we, we have been able to see exactly what the strategy for Loudon is tonight. You know, they want to stay compact, well organized defensively, and then look for counterattack opportunities. They already show that they have the talent to play that game. Now, Things can change drastically if Pittsburgh is, is able to score. So look how that's going to be a very important moment in the match. Who scores first? That can change the dynamic of the game. Hope Gunn just ricochets that out of bounds in front of Dequa. Rovira plays it out to midfield. Chased down there by Ordonez, who played his college soccer here locally at Pitt. The Spaniard. Oh, nice attempt there to stamp that out of the air. Peters near side. Good pressure by Loudon. And into the chest and stolen by Cicerone. Russell to his right. Hesitates, shoots, and a save right into the lap of Zamudio. Oh, a lot of quality right there from Cicerone. Starts on the left. He already knows he wants to move in. He wants to find the right angle. He's able to move past Garay, then takes on the right-footed shot. And Dicko was very close, yeah. very close. You know, a slight touch might have done it for Pittsburgh. Inches away. We're in the 18th minute. Scoreless. Two undefeated teams here battling at Highmark Stadium. Both have won twice, tied once. Loudon defeated Indy 11, won nothing. Three zip shot out at New York Red Bulls and nil nil at Miami FC. And, and that's a huge result for Loudon because they finished that game one man down. Sammy Gadiri saw a red card late in that in that match. But still, you know, they, they had to go over 20 minutes with a man down. Yeah, outstanding work by Loudon. You're looking at Bob Lilly, of course, in his fifth season. Four consecutive playoff appearances, the longest streak in club history. And his team has a free kick here. Coming up, it's like it's being teed up by Argudo. Argudo. Blasts it towards the far post. Peters above everybody with his 6-5 frame. But headed it out. Well, it was a good ball from Argudo on the right side. Just Peters unable to put the shot in frame. So another missed opportunity for Pittsburgh. But, you know, as long as you are 
getting closer to Samudio and putting pressure on, 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 on Loud on defensively. I think you're doing the right thing. You know, it's very early in the game. Cicerone deflects it and then pushed out wide by Dikwa. With his skill here. Rovira. And it picked. Here comes Loudon. It's Hopkins. The youngster unable to keep it in bounds. Well, you know that happens. Good effort from Gamble, recovering the ball in the middle, then looking for Hopkins. But Hopkins not aware of what he wanted to do. Initially thinking about the cross, then about holding on to the ball. He was just too close to the line. Needed to make a quick decision. Turnover there, unable to reach the feet and connect with his teammate. Sargis, Hayden out of Carson City, Nevada. Another youngster, 19 years old, and this is Michael Gamble. Well, you talked about the challenge of coaching this squad for Coach Martin with all this youth. Trying to keep them competitive day in and day out. But on the flip side, a lot of talent to work with, right, Jose? Yeah, you know, that's that's the beauty of the game, right? When you're coaching young players, you can see them develop. Uh, you, you give them opportunities. They have the hunger. They have the desire. And, um, you know, that's that's also part of the game. You know, it's, it's not always about winning championships. Sometimes you win within your own roster with the development of, of the players. No penalty comes in there. Free kick upcoming and handled by Danny Griffin. Talk about a man of steel in the Steel City. He has not missed a game in two plus pro seasons. Wow. Played all but 12 minutes during the 2021 campaign. Yeah, that's a great stat. Now the coach clearly a little displeased with that long ball. Hall of Fame coach Lilly, five time coach of the year. Man, what a mark he has made on this franchise already. Here in Pittsburgh after coming over from Rochester. On the attack, Argudo now slows, waits for help. A steal there. There's the whistle comes in against Hopkins. Sending the hound to the deck. Well, for Hopkins, I think, you know, it's it's part of a learning process when you're playing, you know, as, as a number nine, and sometimes you're you're just gonna have to stay present and start start stay near the ball and just take your time. Because committing those type of fouls, you know, just give possession back to Pittsburgh and give them the opportunity to sit up offensively. Kevin Silva will launch it. Silva in goal on the 1-1 tie at Detroit FC. And that is their lone draw. Two victories for the Hounds. Three to nothing at Memphis. And then 2-1 against Hartford here at Highmark. Vera. Here's Canardo serving it in beautifully. Great touch, but sent out wide as Gamble cannot clear. Chipped in precariously, but alertly again, Zamudio. 
Yeah, this time Pittsburgh, they were able to move the ball forward, but you know, as soon as they got near the box, again, good effort, good read defensively, quick header, and Samudio holds onto the ball. It looks like as of right now, you know, 25 minutes in, everything goes according to plan for Loudon. Good pressure. Upfield, Dequa, who has six appearances for Cameroon under 20 national team. Albert, big time talent. Settling is Argudo. Under duress, playing it back all the way to Silva. Long ball finds his man, although chipped nobody home there for the Hounds. Alert play by Rovira again, and Forbes has it with space to his right. Forbes, the blast is blocked. Bernardo, his lone goal this season, Jose, was similar to that. It came from a blast outside of the box. Yeah, way too much room. If you're loud and you're giving him Bernardo Forbes, you know, a, a lot of room with the ball. He can do several things. He can score, he can assist, as we all know. Um, yeah, that's asking for trouble. Splitting multiple defenders, but can't get that pass through. Near side, that will be a throw in for the River Hounds. Rovira, second most tenured Hounds player his fourth year, and he is off to a good start tonight, isn't he? Yeah, well, you know, he's usually very good. You know, he doesn't commit a lot of, a lot of mistakes. He's very aggressive with the ball. And because of the time that he has with the team, you know, he's very helpful as well. He's like a coach inside the field for Bob Lilly. Oh, good challenge there by Hope Gund. And Smith, quickly. Instead, we'll let Gamble throw it in. Gamble, 30th overall selection back in 2016 by the New England Revolution, Wake Forest product. Gamble, six key passes this year and an assist. Oh, good read there by Dequa. And another one coming back. As the teams turn it over, and then a foul committed by Grant Lillard. Pleading yeah. his case. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's a center back. It doesn't really matter where he is on the field. <laughs> if it's, it, he's, you know, it's, he's, Great in, in, in the anticipation, he was very good holding on to the ball. But as he moved forward, you know, as a center back, you're going to struggle in that position. The ball chipped over Peters. Smith looking for it back on his cut. Didn't get it. Just outside the 18. Good pass in there, but broken up by Peters. Tries to clear. Counter attack opportunity here, but Hope Gund is able to disrupt that. Smith. Hard work by Hopkins. And a blast from distance scooped up and a save made by Kevin Silva. Off of the shot there from Loudon. Yeah, it was it was not an easy save at all because the ball bounces right in front of Silva. That can complicate things. I believe that was Viada. That's, that's a very good effort from from Loudon Ari. You know, it looks like they're growing into the game. Aki, 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 Aki,
They want them higher. The pressure continues from uh, Loudoun United. Rovira surveys, finds his man. Here comes Forbes. Try to get it back to him on that cut. But Smith, so quick, Camarney is. The midi from England. Fourth overall pick back in 2021 by DC United out of Clemson. I think both teams are off to a good start. You know, within their role, of course, you know, we all know what the strategy is for, for Loudon. But whenever they have the ball, they play quality soccer. One, two touches at the most. You know, that creates opportunities, moves the ball faster, makes the the game a lot more interesting. And, and the same thing for Pittsburgh. You know, they, they, they have a lot of quality in the middle and they are showing it so far. We'll see if we get goals, but you know, still, I think it's it's a very good half. Loudon beginning to pressure more. Well, you hear the Steel Army, they will bring that energy the entire 90. What a great fan base that is here at Highmark Stadium for the River Hounds. The Loudon Stampede also has brought some fans, made the trip. Peters, Hounds taking their time and out looking to move it upfield. Deflected near side and letting it roll out is Gamble. Coach Lilly shouting instructions onto the pitch. What do you think he wants out of his team here? Well, you know, I think the intensity is right. You know, maybe the one thing that, you know, he might be looking to adjust in the second half is just to be able to step step up a little bit in terms of creating chances as close as possible to the box, move the ball um, quickly within the both wings, and then try to set up a Dikwa, which they did early on with one cross. But other than that, you know, it's, it's Dikwa trying to create his own opportunities, and that needs to change into the 18 and trying to keep it in but to no avail good effort again by Argudo who played 39 games for Columbus in the MLS back in the 18-19 season young man out of Queens New York And this young man has not been scored upon yet. Three clean sheets coming in. Whistle go against Loudon. This is the 10th meeting. The Hounds are 4-0 and here at Highmark Stadium against Loudon. They're 8 1 0 all time. And that Loudon lone win came uh, last June 30th in Leesburg. You know, going back to, to Samudio, you know, this is a big year for him. 23 years old, played in USL League One last few seasons. I'm getting the opportunity to start at the USL Championship. It, it's a big responsibility. Captain Canardo trying to keep it in. Took a bump out of bounds. It will be a goal kick from Zamudio. Yeah, he played for North Texas and Fort Lauderdale in League One. Signed by Miami FC in July of 21. Now he's taking that next step to become a starter for the team in USL Championship. And you know, like, like we mentioned before, you know, it, lo it looks like he has that quality. All the work that, you know, is required from a goalkeeper. Ooh, busting ahead nearly. 
found himself ahead of the pack, but Cicerone, but long ball in the air, tough to beat Peters. team in interceptions with 17 talk about a no fly zone with wheat back there the 6-3 defender out of Akron Ohio he's got 15 aerial duels won 10 clearances led the team with 108 clearances last year so Shane wheat he's just solid we're coming into the last 10 minutes of the first half you know for Loudon the main goal is to you know, stay well organized defensively, take the scoreless draw to the locker room. And for Pittsburgh, you know, they, they're gonna try to get that goal late in the first half. Maybe they can gain on some momentum and try to force Loudon out of the back and in the second half, the game can open up a little bit for the Hounds. Well, the 17-year-old Hopkins Letting the official hear it. That's great to see, right? The personality, 17 years old. <laughs> he believes he's right. Of course he does. <laughs> I've got one at home who's right at all the time. Just ask her. <laughs> They're going to get in trouble, Larry. <laughs> so the Hounds fans let the officials hear it. Steel Army. Well, they say they're loud, dedicated, and passionate. A great way to describe themselves. Lock it in! Shift! 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 Hate it higher! Throw it coming from Biasi. Up high, well played there by Griffin. At just 5'9", he's got some bounce to him. Looking for Cicerone to get things started or Dequa. Well, Smith can do it for Loudon. Look at his acceleration. And the pass, settled, shot, oh. and wide of the target. Great look there. Set up by Smith. Off of the foot of Liotti. Yeah, it's a great setup from Smith. He's able to move past two defenders easily. Strong, but at the same time with a lot of quality to set up his teammate. Liari takes way too much time. Needed to finish early. Gives the opportunity to the defender to come and block. There will be a corner kick, the first of the day. Garay directing it out wide, headed up on the deck. And Captain Canardo able to clear it. A great chance there created by Smith, as you said, Jose. Good hustle at midfield. That was Garay. Jeremy, part of both the uh, El Salvador and U.S. national youth teams. Dual citizenship. Yeah, time will come where he's going to have to make the decision whether he plays for the U.S. or for El Salvador. And recently it was the U.S., so maybe that decision has been made. Mahung, 
Monongahela River in the background here at Highmark. And there's the uh, Steel Army. Garite will take his second corner this time for the opposite side. Obviously, a very important moment for Loudon. This is the opportunity to get numbers inside the box. Steel Army letting him hear it, putting the pressure on. It's a tall back line for Pittsburgh, 6'5", Peters, 6'3", Wheat. Garai, low liner, headed out. Sent back in there, but right to Silva. And the crowd applauds it. Good action by Hopkins and company. That's it, Jack. That's it, Jack. Well, this portion of the broadcast is presented by Mike's Beer Bar. Mike's is the official watch party location of the Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC. Meet me at Mike's. Surveys, chips it to midfield. Ogunda's there. Well, we expected, Ari, a, a, a low-scoring game, but, you know, it, it's it's not because of lack of, of opportunities. I think both teams uh, have been able to create chances. Oh, it's a shot in the face. Great job by our camera crew as we see that. Inadvertent, of course, by Rivera. That, that left hand got up high right in the face of Jacob Green. Yeah, that's a great shot. You saw that in your living room. Let's, here's another look. Oh, right there. see what the decision is from the referee. It looks like it's a yellow card. Yeah, that makes sense. So a yellow is served to Danny Rivera. It's the first one off the match, late in the first half. Something to think about, of course, coming into the second half because Rivera is usually a player very aggressive. Now he needs to be extra careful. A good aggressive job off his line from Kevin Silva. Look at this pass. Losing his balance, looking for the call. Does not get it, is Dequa. Well, it looks like you're the right decision from the referee. It's a 1v1 battle. Now, give a lot of credit to Silva. What a ball. Yeah, that was perfectly placed. I love Ben Roethlisberger. Or now uh, Mitchell Trubitsky <laughs> coming over to the Steelers. Rovira settles, gets it back out. Peters. Good movement here. Arbudo. Griffin working with. Dequa. Looking for that gap with about a minute to play in the half. And that will go on Rovira, who has just served a yellow card, a common fall there. Letting loud and hear it. Crowd having a 
a great time here at Highmark Stadium. No better place to be on a Saturday night. So 30 seconds to work with. How aggressive is Loudon here, Jose? Well, you know, they, they have to take care of the ball, right? They, they have to close out the, the first half. You know, everything is going according to plan for them. So there's there's no need for them to risk all the good work that they have been able to put in. Just stay well organized, hold on to the ball as much as possible, and move on to the second half. Got to midfield, and there is the time. One minute added. So loud time for an attack if they can possess. And they do have a throw in here. It'll be Smith. Now Gamble. Clock continues to run. We'll see Pittsburgh satisfied with taking their time here. Biasi wants to play this cautiously. And a steal by Hope Gund. Just five seconds though. Can they get a shot off? The cross sent high in the air. Still in the 18, but that should put a halt to the first half and it does no surprise a scoreless first stanza here from Hallmark Stadium well contested great battle in the first two unbeaten teams colliding here in Pittsburgh and you see Forbes and Silva head to the locker room scoreless at the half from Highmark Stadium Fun comes in all shapes, sizes, and jackpots. These games, they've become a part of me. They get me excited, make me happy. Although I've never been one for math, I've never had more fun with numbers. The thrill, the suspense. You know, it leaves me speechless. But if there's one thing I have to say, it's how much I love it. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. We are at the half. There is your score in the beautiful Pittsburgh skyline here from Highmark Stadium. And we will take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Riverhounds. And take a look for Pittsburgh, Jose. 
Well, you know, it's it's not an easy one because you have to go on the road to face Tulsa, very good team, off to a good start. Las Vegas, you know, they, they're trying to work on some things. They did not have a good season 2021. They tried to get better. Atlanta United, another young team. Lou, Lou City, oh my goodness. Lou City, what a tough opponent they are. And, of course, Birmingham Legion. Those are the next five games for the Hounds. And for Loudon FC. Well, Low City comes up again. again. <laughs> you well, can't avoid them. Yeah, we cannot avoid them. And listen, it, it's a fun team to watch, but it's a tough opponent if you're allowed. And so you, you're going to have to try to get a good result tonight. Um, after that, you're going to go on the road for o Oakland. Two home games against Birmingham and El Paso. The fifth game next on the schedule against Hartford. And there you have the schedules. We are at the half. No score from Pittsburgh. I'm on a real team. I'm on a real team. in all shapes, sizes, and jackpots. These games, they've become a part of me. They get me excited, make me happy. Although I've never been one for math, I've never had more fun with numbers. The thrill, the suspense. You know, it leaves me speechless. But if there's one thing I have to say, it's how much I love it. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us here tonight. The Riverhounds and Loudoun United FC. No score at the half. Who will take command in the second? We'll be back. And let's look at the USL Championship news and notes. What a pedigree being built, Jose. Well, you know, it's the U.S. men's national team is looking at the USL championship, and that's always good, good news, especially in a World Cup year. And a new league, USL Super League. Well, new leagues means new teams, means a lot of excitement, means that in 2023 there's a whole new deal that's coming up for the USL family, and we're happy to see that. And expanding to Lexington. Well, you know, with with new teams, new leagues, it, it's also time for new teams. And that expansion process is still ongoing for USL. And we're happy to see that, you know, there are still a lot of teams that want to get into the market. This is an interesting league and it's an interesting organization. There's some uh, scores from around the USL championship. 
What's uh, jumping out at you here? Well, ha how about the Colorado Springs switchbacks? You know, they're up 1-0 uh, over Miami FC. Miami FC dealing with a lot of injuries, but still a very good team. Um, well, Detroit, you know, that's that's the one uh, game that is over from the early window. Detroit, uh, another another team that's coming into the league, able to get a 1-1 draw against Memphis. And that's two 1-1 one, one, uh, draws in a row for Detroit. They had that against the Hounds in the last time out. And here's some upcoming matches to keep your eye on. There's the Pittsburgh as they face off with the FC Tulsa and some many other attractive matches here. Yeah, we look at, you know, El Paso and Monterrey. Uh, that's an interesting matchup. Um, I think RGV as well is taking a step forward and facing Indy. Good matchup right there in the Florida Derby as well with the Tampa Bay Rowdies and Miami FC. That's all upcoming. You know, I think uh, as we move on into the regular season, obviously the level of play will go higher. But as of right now, I think we're off to a great start. Yeah, we certainly are. Both of these teams as well undefeated. And we are back here. There is your score at the half. And we will have second half action coming up. Cheer on the Riverhounds all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Hi, Mark Stadium, the one and only 5,000 capacity here and a big crowd on hand. As you see the uh, Steel Army always present. And let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. A couple of good chances created early. Here's Smith. Yeah, this is the, the first opportunity of the match for Loudon. Good counter-attack opportunity. It all started with Smith, but it all ends with a great save from Silva after a wonderful shot from Hopkins. This is uh, the lone opportunity, or at least a clear chance for, for Lab, and they were able to create more after that, but that was the one shot that they had at goal. And right after that, just a few seconds later, it was Ciceroni with a right-footed shot towards the end of the first half. Again, Smith with the ball. Liari, left-footed shot, taking way too much time and just giving Rovero the opportunity to get back and block the shot. Well, no surprise here. This is an even match coming in, and uh, just look at the stats. Well, absolutely. Look at possession, 53% for Pittsburgh, 47 for Loudon. Shots on target, one for Pittsburgh, two for Loudon. 
you know, sometimes stats are a little bit misleading. I think that's the case tonight. You know, we have seen a very, very good half. Teams have been very good with the ball, moving the ball from side to side. And that obviously creates for an exciting match. I think, you know, the scoreless draw so far might be, you know, a little bit misleading for the fans that might be just tuning in. Yeah, Hounds with six total goals on the year, four for Loudon. Uh, just the beautiful skyline. This stadium has it all, including a freight train. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the goals against. Zero, of course, for Loudon on the season. Pittsburgh only two. Both teams are a plus four goal differential coming in. Shots per game, Loudon about 11 and a half per game, and Hounds just over seven. Shots on goal, five and a half for Loudon, and four for the Hounds. So those stats pretty consistent from what we've seen from these two teams. Yeah, well, listen, now as, a, as the coaching staff is able to talk to the players, they know exactly what the opponent is trying to do first 10 to 15 minutes of the second half are going to be very important. They're going to show us exactly what the coaches, the, what the coaches were talking about over halftime and how they want to approach the second half. Obviously, Pittsburgh playing at home, they want to go for three points. Loudon, they might be happy with the draw, but they still have an opportunity with the counterattack game to maybe take three points tonight. And both teams coming in with seven points apiece tied for fourth place in the Eastern Conference. And that train, that's the way Loudon would like to move it in that direction to start. It will be the 17-year-old Jackson Hopkins. 6'2", 160-pounder. Will play for the Virginia Cavaliers next fall. He looks like he can play all day, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Loudon moving from our right to left here in the second. Steel Army getting warmed up. Biasi got a foot on it, and here's Cicerone. Do you expect Cicerone to be more involved here in the second? Yeah, he should be more involved. You know, he had a shot and goal in the first half, but he needs to facilitate a little bit more for Dickwa at the top. I think that's the challenge right now for Pittsburgh. Midfielders have been able to get plenty of touches, but they haven't been able to connect with Dickwa. Biasi. Patient. Donez reverses. You hear the Pittsburgh sidelines. Shouting instructions. Wheat working with Biasi. Splits two defenders. Nice move by Luke. That lead pass. They able to make it to Dinkwa. Dinkwa's cross just over the head. Still in the box though. Forbes. What a move by Canardo. There's a blast and a save. Diving to his left. It is Zamudio again. What a blast from Griffin. A great shot from Griffin. A great save as well from Zamudio. You know, it's all about getting Dickway involved. They were able to, to push the ball forward that time. Get him into space. He was able to create opportunities for his teammates. This time it all ends with a wonderful save from Zamudio. Danny Griffin, three shots on the season, all on target. There's the corner. Griffin has it, goes back into the corner. Oh, what a move there. And the cross, headed out. Nicely played by Argudo. Silva unloading immediately with some pressure. Throw in for Loudon. 
Danny Griffin flirting with his first goal of the season. Jacob Green, Lillard, Lillard, former All-American at Indiana University for the Hoosiers. Grant with the left foot. Good size. He is 6'4, 195. Here, Coach Lilly there, Jose. Yeah, it's not very happy with the with the movement without the ball. You know, the energy needs to go higher for that to happen. And of course, that's unacceptable for coach, especially coming off halftime. Forbes, so skilled. Passing by the Hounds. Oh, great maneuver. Into the 18, a chance, no, ridden off, and a clean steal to the displeasure of the Pittsburgh crowd. Here comes Smith in transition. Numbers, and a shot is blocked. Yeah, an interesting decision right there from Sarges. Center back that move forward after recovering the ball, setting up at Smith on the right. It was an interesting decision to take the shot, especially because Green was wide open on the left side of the field, basically in front of goal. A giveaway, turnover. Here comes Loudon. One on two, a blast and a save. They kept in fielded. But then stolen away by Pittsburgh. Oh, my goodness. Good challenge there. Let's see which way they rule it. It was Biasi tangled up with uh, Liotti. Well, you know, when you have players like Smith, Liotti, and Hopkins, you have to be very careful with the ball. And a bad giveaway. You know, it's it's not exactly the recipe for success if you're at Pittsburgh. And um, Liari is able to just position himself right there in front of Biasi, gets the contact and the foul, but it all comes after a bad giveaway. So what a set piece opportunity here for Loudon. Chipped in out in front. And headed out of the 18 by Wheat. The throw in for Loudon. Whistles blow again. Riverhounds fans, don't forget, try the brand new Riverhounds Amber Lager brewed by Straub Brewery during your next visit to Highmark Stadium. I saw a few of those going down uh, in the Steel Army section, Jose. Hey, Jacob. Look pretty good. Not a Straub. Hey, you cold. Hey, you cold, Jacob. Nice block. Temperatures in the 40s here. You talk, uh, hear the fans, if you can hear that at home, heckling a player for wearing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Possesses. Hounds looking for that advantage. Nice pass into the corner. There's the cross floating out front, far post, headed down. Great chance again for the River Hounds. Biasi back into the 18. Forbes trying to run it down. Oh, oh. 
Great ball one there from Arbuto. Griffin. Here loud in sidelines saying go pressure. You got him. You gotta love the work that Coach uh, Martin is, is showing right now with his team. You know, he's showing the work, right? Because we're not there throughout the week. We can only watch over the weekend, but the work is showing right now. They are very well organized. They know exactly what they want to do. It's it's great, it, and especially when you have so many young players, you know, which it's it's easy to commit mistakes early in your career. It, it's not happening right now for this team. That's a good point, Jose. And undefeated so far this year after winning just four matches in all of last season. What a job by Coach Martin and his staff. Coach Martin, former recruiting coordinator at Wake Forest. He played for his father, Jay, at Ohio Wesleyan, the all-time winningest coach in NCAA history, Jose, his father was. So he learned from the best. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's the Cerrone. And a hold there sent Dinkwa to this beautiful turf at Highmark. As that will go against Sargent. Well, you don't want to give Dinkwa the opportunity to turn and make he, maybe you know, take a shot and roll. So I can see the decision from Sargent to, to put pressure maybe a little bit harder than he would have wanted to. You see the first. Uh, Substitution in the match. Tyler Freeman is coming there he on. Is. We talked about him. Azad Liadi. Brown United substitution coming off. Liadi with Freeman. an opportunity Freeman. early Azad. in the first half. And able to finish. We'll see what Freeman is able to do. Yeah, keep your eye on Freeman. Four shots, all on target, two goals. That ball high into the 18. Sails through, collected there by the Hounds. Whistle blows, that will go against Pittsburgh. You can sense how the intensity is going higher, huh? because, you know, the fans in the stands are doing their part. They want to see Pittsburgh win tonight. And it looks like the players on the field are responding. Well defended there off of that service from Forbes. In the middle, chip forward. Sent on and well read by Zamudio. This kid, Harry. I mean, it's really, really impressive. The way he holds on to the ball, you know, that's it's it's just something to watch. Yeah, that was a crafty delivery from Argudo Jose and uh, Zamudio not fooled at all. Almost into the river. The Steel Army there, heated up now. Forbes, quickly. There's Canardo. Magical with his feet. Look at this move to his left. Puts it out front and a shot blocked. Second attempt and then cleared. My Loudon kept in. Good aggressive play by Biasi. Great action from the Hounds. Great action and a little bit more diverse. Now taking shots from outside the box as well. You know, doing a little bit more. It's Pittsburgh. They are not happy just by dominating possession, which they have been able to do throughout the second half. 
how they want to get that goal. They know that's the key moment in the match. Some fancy ball work there on the far side. Ooh, intercepted. Well read defensively. Lillard. And possible transition opportunity coming up. Green had to take it. Now has it back. Good God. They work it outside. Good touch there from Garay. Sargis, talented 19 year old. Overlapping run, but does not get it. We've got a foul called on Rovira, who did receive a yellow in the first. Yeah, I was about to tell you that. He needs to be careful. Looks like we're going to have some subs from Coach Lilly. Rovira will come off. Well, that was a good decision, you know, especially after committing a foul already with a yellow. Robert Dam Dambrug coming on. Yeah, Dambrug does have a goal this season with a left foot, six crosses. A local favorite finished his college career here at Pitt. Second sub coming in is Alex Dixon, who has a couple of assists this season. As he comes in for Argudo. substitutions, number 22, Robbie Dandro. Looks like Dane Kelly as well. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. He's in the game, Argudo. Number seven, Alex a Great Dixon. effort from Argudo 13, all over the place. Gassi. Number 29, Dane Kelly. Number 21, Bruce Argudo. Dane Kelly in. Kelly with a goal, a couple of assists. Player of the week in the USL Championship first week, scoring his 100th career USL Championship goal. All time goal leader, Dane Kelly. Near side, it's Dixon. Ooh, just through Kelly. The question is, can anybody beat Zamudio? He has not been scored on yet this season. Nice skill there. Ordonez. Numbers possibly for Loudon. Pittsburgh able to recover. Riverhounds appear to be a little bit quicker to the ball at the moment. Jose, would you agree? Yes. I, 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 you know, I think it's maybe it's time. But I think they're going to need fresh legs for the. To his left, Zamudio. Yet another save. Well, first opportunity for Dane Kelly. Not they're going to have to do better than that, Dane Kelly. He didn't get all of it, Dane, but he put it in that right area. Zamudio, too quick left. Sent back by Sargis. Nearly turn it over and Silva will unload. Forbes leading the attack. Precise passing. And nobody there for the Hounds. Gurai working through two defenders. Griffin takes it. Cerrone 
And there's the cross, headed on and tipped. And then it hit the post and deflected on top of the net. I think that's a save for Samudio as well. We'll see if there's contact. Let's take a, good a look. Cross from Forbes, the header. Mm. I agree with you. He got a piece. Oof. Well, that may have been going in by Dequa. Listen, I think right now Loudon is in trouble. They they need they need to at least create an opportunity to. Coach Lilly gets a round of applause. Good catch. <laughs> it was a great catch. But, but Loudon, they, they, they need to get a hold of the ball because right now it's Pittsburgh dominating the game. And when you have players on the field like Dickwa, Kelly, Dixon, it's not going to take too long for them to score. And here they go again. Wide open and a score. Will it count? It doesn't. Yes, it does, Jose. It looked like they might wave it off, but what a score for the Hounds. Well, it's a great combination. It all starts with Dixon through the middle, unable to clear the ball away is Lauren. And then the give and go from Kelly, Dick Watt, back to Kelly, left foot a shot and onto the back of the net for the first goal of the match. And oh boy, Pittsburgh, they have been working for this. Now have been able to capitalize on that opportunity. And they take the lead. 66th minute. And the party begins for the Steel Army. You called it, Jose. You said Loudon was in trouble. A moment after that. What an attack by the Hounds. Zane Kelly with his second goal of the season. They give uh, Dicko the assist there, Jose? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a very generous, you know, Dicko, traditional number nine. Um, you know, nobody would have blamed him for taking the shot right there, but a clear chance for Dane Kelly on the left side. And, you know, he's happy to set up his teammate as well for success. Pittsburgh has the lead, and that's all that matters. Well, good point. So unselfish. There's another ball into the six. This time the whistle blows. So unselfish by Dequa as he picks up his first assist of the season. Dane Kelly, his second goal of the year. And make it 101 for Kelly. So now tactics for Loudon, Jose. He got a pressure. Well, you know now it, it, this is where it gets complicated for Loudon because you know initially the, the main goal was to keep a, a Pittsburgh away from scoring. Now they they haven't been able to accomplish that, and if they want to get at least a point. From tonight's game now they have to change dynamics completely and here come the hounds again more building danny griffin the ball sent in and ricocheted just wide of the target another terrific chance well, it's, it's been a great second half for Pittsburgh. You know, Co Coach Lilly should be very happy that they have been able to create opportunities. And, and, you know, which is something that's really interesting. It's that without Cicerone being involved as much as they would have wanted to, they still have been able to create opportunities. So that's a very good sign collectively. Well, the right is out and coming in for Loudon is uh, Landry. 
Landry out of the Ivory Coast. Also Smith. Substitutions. Number 19. Departing. Oscar Landry. In for number 14, Jeremy Garay. Forbes out of the corner. In swinger and whistle before the action as two players were tangled. Peters went down. So Espinal is in for Smith. Good productivity from Camorni tonight. Do it again. Late whistle right there, but I think a good call. So 20 minutes to go. Coach uh, Ryan Martin trying to change things up a little bit on the field, bring some fresh legs. You know, 20 minutes is, is plenty of time for Loudon to get that goal. They bring in the fresh legs. High in the air, Landry. Landry comes in with an assist this season. And quick feet. There's Tyler Freeman. Have to figure. That if Loudon's going to come back and tie this, Jose Freeman's going to have a lot to do with it. Yeah, they need to feed him the ball a little bit more. And there he is. Surrounded by River Hounds. Cicerone. And sent down by Dixon out wide. Open space. Without a doubt, things are opening up for Pittsburgh, whether they decide to look for counterattack opportunities or to hold on to the ball, that remains to be seen. But as of right now, they're dominating the game. There's a blast and a save, diving towards the near post. Zamudio from the blast from Dambrot. Here's another look. Caught it in on the left side, right for the shot. A lot of technique required to be able to accomplish that. And Samudio again with the save. Dan Brock going right foot there. He scored his goal earlier in the season with the left foot. The Steel Army shaking the stands. Low liner. Wound up being a Hounds throw in here near side. They know how to have a good time, don't they? The Steel Army. <laughs> they are having a good time. And listen, the goal helps a lot, right? It sure does. <laughs> yeah, right in front of them. It'll be Captain Canardo teeing this up. All-time assist leader in the USL. Out swinger oh, headed in beautiful. for the score. What a dime put in by Forbes. And headed in by the River Hounds. Doing it again. Zane Kelly. Second of the night. Well, the assist king is back. What a ball from Kennardo Forbes. And what a header as well from Dane Kelly. A beautiful setup. And when you have a striker inside the box with the quality that Dane Kelly has shown throughout his career in USL Championship, that's a great combination. And 
results in the second goal of the match for Dane Kelly, and it's 2-0 over Loudon. What a performance in the second half for the Hounds. Well, right from the opening kick in the second, you could see the intensity, the energy. They were quicker to the ball right from the beginning of the half. Jose said Loudon was in trouble, and they trail by two now. Uh, Coach Lilly, that's why he's a genius, isn't he, Jose? He knew uh, the exact time to insert Zane Kelly into this match. Kelly, Dixon, you know, are players with a lot of energy, a lot of verticality as well. They know exactly what they need to do when they move offensively. And they have been able to perform at their level so far, which is obviously good news for the Hounds. Well, two of the all-time best, and the Hounds aren't done here, but a whistle comes in outside. Two of the all-time best in the USL. Canardo Forbes has just put up his 46th all-time assist, and Zane Kelly, 101, and his 102nd goal scored in his career. Dangerous there, alertly, quickly, Silva covers it. And Kevin says no problem, slow it down. Well, what a way to spend a Saturday night, huh? Highmark Stadium, this type of excitement. It's a beautiful night for soccer, and you know, I think both teams, they, within their own strategy, they, they were committed to playing at a high level. It's not easy to play the counterattack game, which is something that Loudon tried tonight. And, and they were able to create chances, especially in the first half. But the adjustments from Bob Lilly and the coaching staff, they were really, really good. And that's why they have been able to just get a haul of the game in the second half. And the most important thing, they have been able to score, which is something that they were not able to do in the first 45 minutes. Well, two goals on the board for the River Hounds. They scored three at Memphis, two here at home over Hartford. So they come in averaging two a game. So Green sent down by Forbes. And yeah, there's, uh, they're going to the pocket there, Jose. Yes, there will be a yellow card for Canardo Forbes. It is the second one of the match. The first one for Rovira, but no longer in the game. The left winger for the Hounds. Here's another look. Oh, well, you know, it's a tricky one because I think he slips right before he makes contact. But then he tried to hold himself up with the shoulder. Right, <laughs> right, yes. So Canardo's night is finished to a round of applause as he is replaced by Toby Sims. It looks like Albert Dickwell will be coming off it as well and coming on this uh, enduring Angelo Kelly Rosales. So Angelo Kelly, at a, born in Honduras, grew up in Iowa, and Toby Sims. USL League Two Defender of the Year last year. He was a Division II All-American in 2021 out of Chowan University in North Carolina. Speaking of North Carolina, they got a big game tonight. Dang, you gotta get off your mark! Dang! Landry. So Loudon, you gotta start taking some chances, huh, Jose? Well, now's the time. Now is the time because, you know, you have a little bit over 10 minutes to go. It's it's gonna be important for them to, to stay well organized because, you know, with the players that are on the field for Pittsburgh right now, if you give them enough room, it's trouble. Well, good quick action here for Loudon FC as they burn a corner they're going to play it quickly in 
And now served in, but all River Hounds in front of the target. That will go on Loudon. They've got everything over Highmark State. If you get freight trains, boats, helicopters, <laughs> all sent in by the Steel Army. <laughs> well, Kevin Silva has done his job well. Former UCLA Bruin. Well, with Smith off the pitch now, who's it going to be to create for Loudon, you think, Jose? Well, they have to look for Freeman, no doubt about yeah. it. You know, he's a quality player for them coming off the bench. He has proven that early on in the season, but for some reason they haven't been able to connect. Green on the left side as well he needs to move forward. Uh, and just, you know, everybody, they, they just have to try to be just a little bit more aggressive. Collectively, I think they did a very good job defensively, but offensively moving the ball forward. They were lacking a little bit, and so, you know, if they're able to change that in the last 10 minutes, maybe they can get, can get back into this game. So Loudon getting set to check in some more fresh legs. Here's Cicerone. Ooh, that one just in front of Kelly again. He may have had a hat trick. A good job by Sargis. Keeping it off the foot of Kelly. We have another substitution, but you know, I, I think the struggle in the second half for Loudon, it's one thing, it's its not having the ball, but at the same time, if you don't have the ball, you're chasing constantly. You see Clark coming on, Hopkins, who believe in the field. So Ari, they have been chasing the ball for most of the second half, and that's exhausting for any team. It's frustrating at the same time because you don't have possession. So Chase Clark, who's just 16 years old, comes in. And Akinboni, who is just 15 years old, enters the match. Well, talk about an opportunity and responsibility, right? Down by two goals, 10 minutes to go, 15-year-old. All right, let's see what you can do. In four, that was just incredible. They're playing at this level, Jose, at 15. Good chase and energy there, but deployed from Espinal. With the Hounds coming back at it. Still pressuring Dambrot. Riverhounds fans, check out the next Riverhounds Away watch party. That is April 9th at 2 o'clock at Mike's Beer Bar as the Riverhounds take on FC Tulsa. Mike's Beer Bar. Sounds like the place you want to be. Toby Sims. Well, I think it's fitting, Jose, that Zamudio, who hadn't been scored on all season, was scored on by the all-time great USL championship goal scorer, Dane Kelly. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're going to concede a goal, you know, it better be to one of the top strikers in the history of the league, right? Yeah, hopefully that'll help him sleep better tonight. come again Cicerone leaves it back a shot and a save I think it hit the post 
What a delivery. I, I believe that was off of the foot of Dixon. Yeah. Talk about the depth from this team, right? Like, I mean, they have so many options moving forward. This all starts with Kelly Rosales. So close. Cicerone brings the ball in, left footed shot. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that was by Zamudio. He's just thankful it got post. What a blast from Dixon. It has been relentless attacking from the Hounds. Good inside out move. Nobody there for the Hounds. You know, these are the games, Ari, that, you know, when you look back into your coaching staff, these are the games that you put so much value into it because of the way they um, they, uh, they, they they were able to read the game perfectly in the first half. They knew exactly what they were missing. They were missing intensity, the energy, and we saw it from the get-go in the second half. And then you were able to bring some more experience, some more attacking players, and that's exactly what you needed. So you know, this, these are the games where as a fan, as a front office, even the players value the the understanding of a coaching staff. This is just quality coaching tonight. Yeah, well stated, Jose. We knew it would be a great battle between Coach Martin and Coach Lilly. This team's so sound. Uh, the Riverhounds, they've got plenty of weapons. Just a solid defensive team, but when you throw in the weapons that they have in their offensive arsenal, Jose, this is going to be a team to be reckoned with. Absolutely. You know, the expectations should be high for the Pittsburgh River Hounds this year. I think they're off to a good start, and if they can continue to stay healthy, listen, this is going to be a very good team. Yeah, they will remain unbeaten on the season. Moments away from improving their record to 3-0-1. Corner kick, Dixon will handle it. Led the Hounds and assists with nine. And second goals with nine last season. Got a couple of assists already. Looking for another one. Time to get some experience for these young players for Loudon in this match late. <laughs> and that will go on Kelly. That should be a yellow. Yeah, there it is. Third. Yeah, third one. Yeah, it is the third one. And, you know, I think this is just Kelly trying to get a hold of the ball. No bad intention at all. But in the end, a good call from the referee. You cannot allow that to happen. Isaac, lay off Grant. Go, 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 me, man. So a free kick with a couple of minutes remaining in regulation. Blasted down by Sargis. He's like an old man on the pitch right now at 19. <laughs> and he has moved forward, started the game as a center back. But a desperation move trying to get that First goal for Loudon. Here come the Hounds again. Uh, yet another corner. 
Just continuous pressure. Well, and, and, and you know, as, as a fan from Pittsburgh, you have to value as well the fact that this team is leading and they are not satisfied with two goals. They want to go for the third one. They want to keep on scoring. And that's something that you hope to you have to put a lot of value into because it would have been very easy for uh, Pittsburgh to just concentrate on keeping the score the way it is. Dixon in swinger. And a lot of jersey tugging there as Toby Sims trying to position himself to head that in. So Loudon, it appears, will have an extra three minutes of stoppage time. Which is not bad nowadays, right? Because we, we, we had the, the 10 substitutions, five per side. Good ball here. Long ball. Pittsburgh able to recover defensively. Good effort by Chase Clark. Toby Sims, good size, 6'1", 180 out of England. Hope Gund trying to get something started here as we approach the final few minutes. Akinboni, uh, the 15 year old Jose. That ball looped and tracking backwards. Well done by Silva. Not the easiest play. Akinboni, just 15 years old. He's got terrific size. 6'3. He comes in at 170, maybe soaking wet, but you figure. He's going to grow into that frame and be a force. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that should be the goal. You know, remember, most of the players for Loudon are still trying to develop. And they're still trying to grow into their own game. Still aggressive. At Angelo Kelly working hard. Well, stoppage time didn't uh, defuse the Steel Army at all. They, <laughs> they could go all night long. Yeah, it, it sounds like the game is just getting started for them. <laughs> The night may be just <laughs> getting started. They may be heading over to Mike's beer bar. Maybe we should join them, Jose. <laughs> well, sounds like that's a good spot, so I don't have a problem with that. So a minute remains. It is 2 0, two second half strikes by the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, both by the all time leading scorer in the USL Championship, Dane Kelly. One set up by Forbes. And the other by Dequa. Both teams continue to work hard here through the final few seconds. That's quite a heave by Sims. And Dane Kelly gets sent to the turf. Yellow card with one second remaining is shown to Sargis. And again, a good call on the referee. Now, it, it looked like Dane Kelly was just pushing forward. There was no way to stop him. 
So as a, as a center back, you know, there's there's no other thing to do than to commit the foul. You know you're going to get the yellow card, but you'd rather have a yellow card than another goal. And the whistle blows, and that will bring this one to a close. 2-0. The Pittsburgh Riverhounds remain undefeated. At 3-0-1, the first defeat of the season for Loudoun United FC as they fall to 2-1-1. And we will head to break. We will be back with all the wrap-ups coming up. 2-0, the final from Pittsburgh. From sidelined to starting striker, your extra effort with AHN got you back out there. With every drill, set, rep, you bettered your body and got it ready for that. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Cheer on the Riverhounds all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. Uh, welcome back, everybody. One of the most beautiful venues in the world, Highmark Stadium, Pittsburgh, where the Riverhounds victorious 2-0 over Loudoun. Let's take a look at the highlights here in the second half and just phenomenal play by the Hounds coming out of the locker room at the half in the 65th minute. They get it started. Yes, just a, a few minutes after Dixon and Kelly come into the game, they connect with each other early on in the play. Dick is involved as well. Very generous. The striker sets up his teammate and a nice finish for Dane Kelly. Not a lot Samudio could have done. And it was 1-0. Obviously, a huge moment in the match because Loudon was doing a very good job defensively. 73rd minute, and it's a corner kick. Kenardo Forbes, the assist king, sets up Dane Kelly in between two defenders. Header, and onto the back of the net. 2-0 for Pittsburgh. A relentless attacking in the second half for the Riverhounds. There's your match stats. Just a little bit better, Ari, when it comes to possession for Pittsburgh. But the most important stats, seven shots on target in the second half. Yeah, 16 shots overall as they just dominate the second half. And the Steel Army, they love it. Victory for Pittsburgh for our crew, Santiago Guzman on replay. Mauricio Rodriguez, our producer. Gio Guerrero, our director. Santi Dublis on audio. The Riverhounds win it 2 nil. They are undefeated. For my partner, Jose Rodriguez, I'm Ari Shanox saying good night from Pittsburgh. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.